Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and it's 80 degrees in the Intel lab today, and you know what that means? We've got a brand new OpenCore Legacy Patcher update, 2.0.2. Unlike 2.0.1, this update comes with a lot of fixes revolving around Mako Sequoia, and it prepares us for 15.1, the first major update to Sequoia that's coming in early October. So we got a lot to cover on this update, plus we've got lucky 13 different Mac models to be able to test to make sure that your installation goes as smooth as possible. You're gonna wanna stick around for this one. Let's jump in and get started. 2.0.2 is a bug fix release for 2.0.0 and 2.0.1 to handle some bugs with NVIDIA GPUs, general graphics bugs, and macOS 15.1 support. I mentioned in the beginning that 15.1 is the first major update for macOS Sequoia. It's also going to include Apple Intelligence for supported Macs, and it's slated to release early October, maybe the first or second week of October. This 2.0.2 is preparing for when that update is going to be released so it's ready to go and you can install it on the first day. A lot of questions have been raised about Apple Intelligence and iPhone mirroring. OpenCore Legacy Patcher, it does not support those two features at the moment or maybe even ever because they are heavily relied on hardware to be able to support it. So if you're looking for supporting those two features on your unsupported Mac, unfortunately those aren't working. And one of the first fixes, the NVIDIA Kepler patches were not installing a Mac OS Monterey. And I want to highlight this is that the OpenCore Legacy Patcher developers have not forgotten the previous operating systems. A lot of work is going into fixing Sequoia and making it really smooth, but Mac OS Monterey, Mac OS Ventura, Mac OS Noma are still very good operating systems that a lot of people are running. Now, unfortunately this year, Mac OS Monterey is on the tail end of the three supported operating system and is no longer supported by Apple for security updates. If you're on Mac OS Monterey, I do recommend jumping to at least Mac OS Ventura. Mac OS Ventura is very solid right now and it's in that third spot where it's only getting security fixes and there has not been that many reported problems with Mac OS Ventura. So if you're looking for a really solid reliable system, Mac OS Ventura would be where it's at while still getting security updates. There was also an issue with iMac 7,1 and 8,1. This is the 2007 Core 2 Duo iMac and the 2008 early Core 2 Duo iMac. Those failed to install the root patches after installing macOS Sequoia, and that's fixed now. When working on a new operating system, some of the pieces of the operating system need to be downgraded to versions that have worked in previous operating systems. And one of those was the Apple GVA stack on AMD, GCN, and newer GPUs. VT Decoder XPC would be crashing. And Austauer Sportler found that, and he would then resolve that issue and no longer needs to downgrade, so that's a really nice fix to avoid those crashes. Up next is fixes around the 30 3802 base GPU Max. Now, which Macs are those? If we take a look at the 3802 base graphics cards, we have Ivy Bridge, Intel Haswell, and NVIDIA Kepler Max are based off of that graphics designation of 3802. Now, the fixes on these are basically, for the first one, is some glitches, problems with Mac OS Sequoia 15.1, because keep in mind, 15.1 is already an advanced beta. It's basically really close to being ready to go, so that was already identified and fixed. And the next one is there were some core image crashes on those same Macs running 15.0, and that was also resolved. Next up, Terascale 2 HDCP kernel panic issues, and that's high bandwidth digital content protection. If you're watching anything that like a video or something that has that, it was kernel panicking. There was a issue where the wallpaper was locking up on non-metal GPUs running Mac OS Sequoia. What it does is it removes the unsupported metal-based wallpaper, Macintosh wallpaper. That's a really cool wallpaper. That's the one, and I'll show you this. This is what that screensaver looks like. I took a high definition recording of their screensaver. So if you were unable to upgrade to Mac OS Sonoma or Sequoia and you want to be able to see this, this is it. And what's interesting about this, this is not just a standard video or uh, high definition wallpaper. This is a video slash application file that can actually see this date here. This changes and so does the time. It displays the current date and time. So it's like an active program based screensaver. That's really cool, but that was causing a bunch of problems on non-metal Macs. 
There's another issue with resolving a firmware upload incompatibility on pre-2012 Macs with a two point with a 2012 airport card upgrade. Ostow spoiler is another one that fixed that. Basically, one of the steps in here is that once we go open core legacy patcher, we don't get any more firmware updates. And now keep in mind your Mac might have already lost firmware updates long ago, but if it's one of the newer ones and you haven't updated to the latest version of the supported OS. You need to be able to do that to get your last um, firmware update for the hardware. I also wanted to cover the 2.0.1 hotfixes. I only covered the 2.0.0 release. There was a fix in MacBook Pro 13,3 listing available patches after installed all applicable patches. Now, what happened with this particular model was is you could you would install the root patches and then reboot and then it comes back up and then it says that those patches are required to install again and the patcher doesn't even think that it needs to install them and it thinks it needs to install them indefinitely so that was fixed there was another nvidia tesla and kepler patches we're not installing on mac os monterey or older if applicable for example mac os big sur and that about rounds up the 2.0.1 update all right, let's go through a live walkthrough on how to update OpenCore Legacy Patcher to 2.0.2. Our demonstration Mac here for this is a 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro, so one of the newest Intel Macs, and we're running macOS Sonoma 14.7. So all we need to do is open up OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Now, if you got a shortcut down here in the dock, as I showed you how to do in the past, all you need to do is open it up for the first time. The app checks for updates after a restart and opening the app. And we see this, it tells us what version we're running. And on this demonstration, we're running 2.0.0, the release edition, and 2.0.2 is available. All we need to do is click download and install. We can view it on GitHub like we have in the past. All we need to do is click on download and install. And it's gonna download the 2.0.0 update to be able to update the application from 200 to 202. Now again, I walked through this on each update because a couple of reasons. First of all, we always have a bunch of new viewers doing this for the first time. I always like to also mention my veteran viewers. These are the people who have been doing this and watching along for years. You guys have been here and you know the drill. I also do this just in case there's any changes to the process. The patcher is always evolving and maybe there's something that even I miss and I want you to be able to see live when I do this. So you can and also walk through this with me step by step. Update successful. Step one, two, and three. The application now is updated to 2.0.2. Step two now is to update OpenCore to your EFI partition on your hard drive. So we'll click on yes for that. And then we're gonna install it to our EFI partition. Disk zero and EFI. Mounted it here. Now it's all installed. Now that step two is complete. Step three is installing the new 2.0.2 updated root patches. Yes, we would like to do that. It's gonna check and show us all of the things that will be patched on our system, AMD Polaris, Modern Wireless, and a T1 security chip. And the last time we were patched, 200 on September 14th, right before the launch of macOS Sequoia. We're gonna start root patching. And what it's gonna do is if you need the metal lib package, or the kernel debug kit is gonna reach out and see if you need it. We don't need that now because there hasn't been a macOS update to 14.7.1 or macOS Sequoia 15.01 or 15.1 yet. Once that happens, then it would download the KDK or the new Metal Lib package when required. It found out that it is matched and we already have it downloaded and cached in the system. So it installs that. All we need to do is reboot and restart. What I like to do after the root patches are installed, I like to go into the patcher again and verify that everything installed properly. I click on install root patch and there it is. All applicable patches are already installed 202 of September 28, 2024. Good to go. Our touch ID is working, our touch bar is working, and our unlock with fingerprint is working. Everything's going good on this 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro. Now let's take a look at the other models. Okay, next up, we're going to focus on a couple of macOS Sequoia test machines, and we're also going to talk about the Metal Lib support package. I'm getting a lot of questions in the comments about what this is and where is it stored. So our demonstration Mac here is a mid-2014 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro that is a Kepler-based machine. First of all, this machine is running A-OK -okay with no issues, and we're on 15.0 production and 2.0.2 for the metal support package 
which models need this new package and it's kind of like the kernel debug kit that's needed to be downloaded we can take a closer look at all these models we talked about this earlier with the 3802 we've got ivy bridge intel haswell and nvidia kepler which is part of our demonstration mac if it's any of these models here you're going to need that metal lib support package and the metal lib support package is stored in library application support titanium folder where the application itself Itself is stored. So if we open this up, we can actually see the different versions that we've already installed, the beta versions as test, and our production of 24A334. If we dial down into there more, we can see all of the files required. The patcher downloads this straight from the Dortania servers or the OpenCore Legacy Patcher servers, and this is all processed on the server right after the update comes out. This whole mechanism here is absolutely amazing how McCoy and all the developers work to get the wonderful job. So that's it for this 2014 Kepler-based MacBook Pro and macOS Sequoia. Next up on the list is our Trash Can 2013 Mac Pro running Sequoia 15.0 production version. 2.0.2. This machine has AMD Legacy GCN graphics and modern wireless and the last time we patched was 2.0.1. This Sequoia build was running without issues whatsoever after installing 2.0.2. It's running very smooth. Next up is the King, the 2010 Mac Pro. We've got dual 266 gigahertz 6 core Intel Xeon processors. We're also running upgraded Bluetooth and wireless and we have an upgraded metal compatible AMD Radeon Pro WX 4100 4 gigabyte that is Polaris based. We are running 15.0 production version 2.0.2 and as you can see here, we do have our modern wireless instead of our legacy wireless and our AMD Polaris legacy USB 1.1. And everything is running very well on this Mac Pro and Mac OS Sequoia. Now let's talk about Mac OS Sonoma 14.7. It is a very solid operating system that's running very well on multiple systems and it can now be the steady state because it's only getting security updates now and no major feature changes. So hopefully we do not see very many big changes that cause any problems with the patcher from here on out. We're running a little bit short on time here so we got to pick up the pace. We're going to go oldest to newest. So the first one is our MacBook Pro 17 inch late 2011 running 202 no issues whatsoever next up is our iMac 27 inch mid 2011 14 7 and 202 no issues there either we've got our Mac mini late 2011 that's running an Intel GPU 14 7 and 202 no problems Next up is our 13 inch mid 2012 MacBook Pro. And this is actually the most popular model, the 9,2 out of all of the Open Core Legacy Patcher models out of the 83 different supported models. It is running AOK -OK 147 on 202. Next up is our MacBook Air 11 inch 2014. 147202, no issues whatsoever. And if you're noticing a theme here, or it seems like I'm just rushing through this, this is what we want to see. In the past update videos, I've had multiple problems with different versions that we went over that. So the fact that we're blowing through these with no update problems and no graphical problems, no launching problems, this is saying a very good thing about the patcher in its current state on 202 and macOS Sonoma, running really good on this MacBook Air 11 inch. Next up is our late 2015 5K 27 inch iMac that has had problems in the past, 147202. No problems whatsoever with the patcher. Everything's running really well. And finally, our MacBook Retina 12 inch early 2016 1.1 i3 Intel running good on 202 and 14.7. Now, if you're missing this little guy, our polycarbonate mid 2010 13 inch MacBook, well, this one we did have a couple problems and it's not necessarily related to just the patcher. I was trying to get it to update to 14.7 and I'm having a couple issues. I just kind of ran out of time trying to troubleshoot it, but it is running strong on 14.6.1 and 202. And that's the 202 Open Core Legacy Patcher update video. Let me know in the comments, have you upgraded? Is your system running a lot better after the update? Are you waiting a little bit? Are you looking to update to macOS? 
a Sequoia, are you holding on Sonoma, Ventura, or even Mac West Monterey, or even Big Sur? Let me know in the comments. One quick note, if you were affected by Hurricane Helene, I hope that you are in a safe position and my heart goes out to anybody that was affected by this hurricane. And if you wanted to be able to give back to some of the people in need, there's multiple organizations, American Red Cross, the Salvation Army, United Way, GoFundMe, the World Central Kitchen, All Hands and Heart. I'll put a link in the description on multiple places where you could give back if you would like to. Hope everybody's okay and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.